so I'm Steph Sword Williams and I am the founder of Fuck Being Humble. Um, for those of you that don't know Fuck Being Humble, I set up the pl platform roughly two years ago now um, and I really wanted to set out to help people be unapologetically proud of their achievements and also just get really comfortable with being their own cheerleader. So a lot of the stuff that I talk about is helping you with like how to write your CVs, how to stand out against competition, how to ask more money, how to network. And these are all things that I kind of feel like we haven't really been taught throughout education or as we're going into work. And actually these are the things that are super important to help you and your career and everything you wanna do moving forward. Now, and actually when I tell people I've started a platform called Fuck Being Humble and it's all about self-promotion, I usually get looks like this of people being slightly uh, concerned and nervous and don't really know what to think. But don't ever let anybody make you feel awkward about self-promoting because actually it's their issue, not yours. And when you break down what self-promotion actually means, self just means I and promotion is just an activity that supports an aim or a goal. So it's nothing to feel awkward about. It's not self-indulgent. It's absolutely something that's gonna transform your career and how people see you. So make sure you prioritize it and don't be swayed by what other people say. Now, I've worked in advertising for the past seven years. So I've worked for agencies like TBWA, Love Creative, uh, TCO London. Um, I've worked with for a range of different ad agencies and I've learned the power that storytelling can have to brands but also to individuals and when you think of some of the icons that we know and love like Stormzy or Adele or you know Billie Eilish all these different people are the, actually the ones that tell their story and communicate what makes them different and let people into their, into their kind of world and actually I think the sooner you learn how to do that the better it'll be for you and, and how you're seen by other sort of professional people or other people in your network um but both fundamentally i kind of help you self-promote so you don't feel like a dick uh, i help you to recognize your self-worth and i teach you how to communicate it now before we jump into the session i just wanted to share a few different touch points that you can stay connected with but being humble on so do follow us on instagram and twitter at f being humble ldn um i've recently started follow uh, recently uh, written my first ever book um which i'll talk a little bit about in this session um and it's everything you need about self-promotion so do grab a copy on amazon um it will be launching on the 4th of september but you can pre-order now on amazon and then finally if you enjoy some of the talks from today's session please do come to future sessions and kind of recommend it to anyone that you think might be benefit from sort of taking on this learning so without further ado, we'll jump into the session. Um, I kind of want to get a yes or no. Has everybody been feeling a bit like this when it comes to 2020 and feeling a bit like this is all a bit too much and I'm overing it, over it. So everybody use the chat function and let me know how you've been feeling about this year because I feel like so many people, whether you're graduating, whether you're leaving school, whatever it is, people in work, so many people feel like this. So it's just worth saying you are not alone in this situation. Um, I've actually, when I started writing this talk, I wanted to write down the three different phases I think you've probably gone through over the past few months. So again, keep saying yes or no if you felt any of these phases. So have you felt like phase one, which was what the fuck is really going on here? Why is all of this happening? Why is this happening to me? This is not fair. Uh, phase two, feeling completely lost, not knowing what directions go in, not knowing how you should um, kind of, you know, how you should be seen, how you should get noticed, how you should get a job. Uh, and then also phase three, just kind of wanting to sack it off altogether by saying, I reckon we just put up the Christmas tree and call it a fucking year. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of yeses go off in the chat, um, which is great to see. Um, and I think it's just worth saying, as I mentioned, like you are not alone in this, like a lot of my peers that do have jobs and they've already established their profiles and their network, they feel like this as well. And it is a really tough time. And I think actually this is going to be the year that actually really tests you and everything you want to do. So rather than be a reason that it stops you from doing things, I really do want you to have an optimism of being like, actually, no, I'm going to own this year and I'm not going to let it take me down. Um, I wanted to share this print. Is, does, does anyone know good fucking design advice? Because if you don't, I think you should go check them out. They massively inspired me. 
Uh, and I actually have this print up on my wall at home and it's such a good reminder to me of, you know, just really making sure that I don't bow down and like forget how good I am and all those things. And it's just that tough love motivation. So definitely check out Good Fucking Design Advice and maybe even buy a poster like this because actually it'll be so good for you to have that attitude of I just need to get on with it and stop complaining about it. Just get on with it. Um, I also want to, before we jump into today's session, just really get encourage you to have some Kanye confidence. Um, I, you know, if someone tweets, I need a room full of mirrors so I can be surrounded by winners, I think we should take inspiration from that. And actually, whenever you're going into interviews or whenever you're trying to psych yourself up, just have a bit of Kanye confidence. Um, so the first thing I want to talk, you, talk to you about today is to just not let labels limit you at any point in your career. And that may be labels from being an introvert or an extrovert. It might be the first job that you get in your career. It could be tons of different things. But please, please, whatever you do, do not let it be a reason why you get pigeonholed or why actually you just don't think you can do things. Because naturally, a lot of us end up being huge overthinkers. We tell ourselves we can't do anything. We tell ourselves that we'll struggle. And actually, it's, it's all in your head and it's you who's saying this. And the other thing that we end up doing is saying, I'm not ready, I'm just not ready for this, I need, I need to get better at this before I can start. And actually, as somebody who's been working in the industry now for seven years, I know that you will never feel 100% ready and you just have to do it anyway. So please, please, please don't let overthinking and feeling like you're not ready be a reason why you don't go out and try things. Uh, I coined this phase, the fear of sounding stupid. And I also wanted to just get some yeses or no's of like, do you ever feel like this where sometimes you just don't want to put your work out there? You don't want to communicate yourself. You don't want to promote yourself because you're just worried that everybody's going to call you out. Maybe say you're not too good at what you do. Uh, maybe say they don't agree with what, you're, you, what you think you are. And whilst I totally get this fear and I totally understand it and I'm seeing lots of people saying yes, I actually think you need to be more scared of being generic. And I, I coined this phrase fobbed, which I know doesn't sound as good. But the fear of being generic is something that you should be more scared about because I see so many CVs, so many portfolios, so many websites that just say the same things, they just regurgitate the same information and there's nothing about them that makes people stand out. And I think that's what I really want people to do when I tell you to put being humble is think about your personal attributes and what makes you stand out. Now, I want to do a, another bit of a Q&A and answer. So I usually do this uh, experiment when I'm running my events in person, which I hope you can all attend at some point when we're allowed to run events again, uh, where I get everybody to stand up and I say, stay standing if you've ever used these words. So as we can't do it in person, I thought we'll still do it via chat, but say yes or no if you've ever used these words to describe yourself on an application, on your websites, on your personal statements. Let's see what the chat's saying. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so there are 500 people dialed into this. So if all 500 of you are using these words, how on earth do you think you're going to stand out? And I'm sorry if I sound like a tough love agony aunt today, but that's my role, is to push you from using words that everybody else is using and to really help you stand out. Now, my boyfriend actually jokes that my tombstone is going to read fucking relentless. Um, which, although I don't think he means it in a compliment, I take in a compliment because actually when you break down what that means, it means that I'm a really hard worker and it means that I don't give up without trying, you know, as anything possible to make sure it can happen. So when you are applying for things, I just really want you to think about what is your personality and what do you need to bring to the table? And one of the things that I really need to encourage you to do is to just don't replace your personality by be, trying to be too professional. I see it time and time again, and it ends up meaning that your applications or the jobs that you're applying for, whatever it may be that you're presenting, ends up being so bland and so generic. And actually, I want to see what your different quirks are. I want to know what your personality is like, how funny you are, how weird you are, and how, what things you do that makes me go, yeah, no, this person I need to connect with. Um, I actually saw there's two designers, um, so Elspeth Hos Hoskins, and she uh, put this uh, uh, left image. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, I will Photoshop your face onto Joe Exotic for a fiver, DM me. And I saw that on Twitter and I was immediately like, love this, I'm gonna look at her work. And then on the flip side, there's also 
um, Ben Motorhead, who's a designer, and he has created this business card that says, when I die, I'm gonna come back as a loading icon to mildly irritate all the people that have been addicted to me during my life. And both of these pieces of artwork or both of these kind of self-promotion tools have made them stand out to me. So I just think when you're talking about yourself, you don't necessarily have to put these things onto an application, but think about how you could interject your personality. Um, so now for anyone who's not been to my sessions, how I run this is I'll talk for five or 10 minutes and then I'll give you an activity to do. So what I want you to do is to write down five words that aren't these words to describe yourself. Now I know it's a tricky one and you can put them in the chat or you can write them personally. It's always nice to see what people say in the chat. Um, but just, I'm going to give you one minute to think about this and you are, you know, you can go away and do it afterwards, but just one minute, have a think about different words that aren't these to describe yourself. Really try and think of like descriptive words, try and think about how people might describe you, try and think about how people have described you in the past. Um, try and make sure they're obviously like positive and letting me know more about the way that you work and who you are as a person. I know it's hard, but a few words, so let's say like resilient, imaginative, inventive. We've just had obsessive, innovative, a terrier, so like just keep thinking of these words international open-minded powerful crazy excitable direct see these are all so amazing and if you're struggling have a look at some of these words and see how you can interject them okay you've got 10 more seconds empathetic sarcastic curious all great words all great words okay your minute is up but really spend some time and think about actually how would i describe myself and if you're struggling with it go ask your friends or your family or your partners or anyone that you've worked for before and just see what they say because you'll get so many more interesting words back and whenever you're writing your personal bio on your cv or you're updating your website try and interject those fun interesting words so the key learning really from that section is just don't hide who you are. Like, please, please don't hide who you are and just get comfortable with communicating what makes you distinctly different against other people. The second thing I want to talk to you about today is I want, to sh I want you to show me that you are obsessed with the industry. Don't just wish for it, work for it and tell me why you're obsessed. So you might say that you're into the creative industry because you go to exhibitions and you take selfies, but actually employers and people that are interested in you want to know what you're creating, what you're doing, what you're doing that's interesting, that's completely different to other people. And also make sure that you share your opinions when you are showing the work that you do. So I wanted to pull together a list of, um, you know, creators that are sharing their work online and just show you the difference of when they share just an image. So this is an argument I have with a lot of creatives is people think that your image will just speak for itself. But when you don't give the detail behind it or the process, you end up not actually letting people into your world and telling them all the great information. So here's a beautiful illustration by artist Erin Anika. And whilst it looks great and it's really nice, it was only in her caption when I read that, you know, it was a um, series that she's been doing and it's for Notting Hill Fish, Fish Shop where they talk about how they've had to adapt during their trade under lockdown. But then she goes on to say like, I've actually been um, re-watching Studio Gibble and I feel like it's really influenced the way I work. I really like the way the food looks and it's how I'm doing it. I've also found drawing food and seafood things really therapeutic. And then at the bottom, she sort of says, also zoom in to see if you can spot the jars of red lentils, which I spent ages on drawing. And again, it's just creating that interaction with people who you're viewing it. So when you are sharing your work, try and share the process, try and share the details, because it's one more opportunity for people to connect. Another example is um, Shara Lee. So she's um, a brilliant uh, advocate for uh, all things like you know, equality and she's basically created this series called Buzz, Buzz Cuts where she shaved her head and she's telling stories of other people that have shaved their heads. And again, whilst the image is striking, it's actually when she talks about her, the description where you learn about the fact that it's off the back of the debut film, Oh My God, She's Bold, uh, where you'll hear from different stories around the world of shaving their head, starting with their own founder. So again, just thinking about telling a bit more you can also cross promote other projects you've done 
And then finally, um, there's Florence Gibbon, whose artwork and messaging is always really stand out and really interesting. And you know, uh, to be fair, her work does speak for itself very often. But again, when you read the caption and she highlights, you know, it is about you making sure that you surround yourself with good people. And she sh ends up basically showing you about her values and the opinions she has. And that's what I want to encourage you to do, that when you share work, share your perspective and what drives you to do it. A few things to think about when you're sharing your work, you know, ask yourself, what was the problem? What was the process? Why is it important to you? And what did you learn? Because when you ask those questions, you end up kind of really building a bit more of a story. And as I said at the beginning, the more you storytell when you're sharing work, the more it allows people to kind of connect with you on an emotional level. And then just get used to celebrating your experience as achievements. Now, I've been saying this to a lot of people recently um, who have been kind of, you know, I've seen CVs or portfolios. And actually, the more you get comfortable with not just saying, here's a poster I designed, but explaining the background behind it and saying, the, this poster that I designed actually changed stereotypes around this. Like, talk to me about the value that the work has brought, not just what you've done. And that's something that you should get into a habit on like throughout your entire career. Because again, that's how you communicate the benefit of you being part of a team or you being hired versus not sharing that information and then me not knowing what it is that, that you can do that will add value. So now the next thing I want you to think about is to think about what projects that you, that you have are you the proudest of? Like, what are you so proud of that you've done uh, at any point, at, you know, the past few years or in your entire life? What projects are you proudest of? And then why is it important to you? And again, a bit like I showed you with those examples, really get under the skin of what is it that, why does it mean something to you and why should other people care about it? So I'll give you another minute to think about that. Okay, you've got like 20 seconds left. Again, just really think about what it is that you could tell people that you want to impress, um, what it is that it, that it means to you and why, you know, thinking about the stuff that they care about, why that might be of interest to them as well. Okay, so time's up on that one. Um, but the key learning really is just show people your values and show people what you stand for. Because so often I think, you know, people do hire you based on your personality, your values, how willing you are to adapt and how open-minded you are and what you care about. Because actually we can train you up in skills. You know, that's not always gonna be the difficult thing. Like it's great if you do already have existing skills, but a lot of people do hire people based on the way that they present themselves and the way they act. And that's just really something to think about as you're putting your work out there or you're talking about what you're capable of is just sharing with people, this is who I am, these are my values, and this is the sort of stuff I'm really driven by. The third thing I want to talk to you about is just don't wait to be perfect. Like I know this is something that maybe, you know, you've been told you have to be a specialist or you have to be absolutely incredible before you can even do anything, but you don't. And also you just need to not assume that everyone else is because I can't tell you how much I speak to people at every age, whether you're like 20, whether it's 25, 30, and onwards and upwards, you know, like everybody will compare each other to everyone else. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, there will be people better than you, but there will also be people who aren't as good as you. And actually it's about not letting that fear stop you from going on to do things. Um, and I think something that I talk to, you know, really try and emphasize at my talks and my events and in my book is to resist imposter syndrome. So for anyone who doesn't know what imposter syndrome is, that's just that feeling of when you're in a room feeling like you don't deserve to be there or that you've even if you have earned the right, you still don't feel comfortable or, or maybe you just don't feel valued in that way that you should be in that space. And actually, I just want really want to encourage you to resist that feeling at all points. Because I speak to people who are like 50 and 60 and they like, 
I'm just, I regret that I ever wasted time thinking I couldn't do things and not experimenting and trying different things in early on in my career. And I really do think the sooner you can nip that in the bud, the sooner you say yes to loads of different things. And I don't mean, you know, to a burnout point where you feel like it all gets too intense, but I really want you to try lots of different things without feeling the doubt or the pressure that it, you have to be perfect at it. Um, I wanted to get a few different examples of where I would say I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, hands up to that. Anybody else uh, would describe themselves like that. I think sometimes when you come out of uni as well, or whenever you're, when you're leaving college or whatever that may be, you do feel like you've not yet specialized in something, you don't quite know what you want. But I would just recommend that you first of all, be a sponge. So when I started running events, I'd never ran them before. I didn't know how to do it. I went to so many events. I used to go networking three to four times a week. And I used to go see what was done well, what wasn't done well. And when I started running my events, I got great feedback, but that wasn't because I was an expert in it. It was because I took the time to really care about it. And then secondly, I got a book deal last year. And I promise you, I am not a writer. I'm a speaker. All my work always has typos in it. Um, it's not something I've ever felt comfortable doing. And you know, I had to really educate myself on reading loads of books and, and looking at different ways to piece stories together. And I absolutely have felt imposter syndrome and like I can't do it. But the idea of being able to create a book or a piece of work that could inspire people for the rest of their lives is so much more important as to whether I've become a perfect person in that space yet. And then thirdly, the final image, um, I have a monthly radio slot on Foundation FM, um, which is a female led uh, radio ch channel. And uh, again, I was asked to do this and it was a two hour show. And although I love speaking, I was absolutely petrified. But once I got into it, I absolutely loved it. And again, it's just constantly throwing yourself in the deep end so that you're just trying new things and you're upskilling yourself and you're not somebody that just sits there and says, I can't do it because you don't know what you can and can't do yet. You've got to keep trying things. The second thing I wanted to talk about in this section is like, Networking isn't optional, it's essential, so just get on with it. Um, the more people that I hear who say, I don't do networking, it's not for me, I feel really sad for them because actually networking is the thing that will help you so much. And it doesn't have to be going into rooms and dominating conversations. You can digitally network from the comfort of your own home whilst watching I May Destroy You or whatever else you're watching. Like, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be stuffy and boring and what everyone kind of like is scared of when it comes to networking, but there's so many good things that can come from it. And for me personally, you know, when I've, you know, shown hunger, so on the left is Patrick Collister and he used to be the creative head of Google. And at DNA D festival, the main festival I went to three years ago, I basically went up to him straight after the presentation and was like, I'm so captivated by everything you said, I'd love you to be my mentor. And he looked a bit like confused and baffled. He gave me his business card and two weeks later I was in Google's head office. Now that was about me showing my hunger and my want to speak to someone like that. And that's about just literally putting yourself out there and not caring whether that person says yes or no. The second thing was I really wanted to speak at Cannes Lions Festival and I didn't get the application in on time. And I was invited to speak on a panel for a friend of mine. And whilst I was there, I met someone at Cannes Lions uh, and I said, oh, I missed the application, but maybe next year and told him about Foot Being Humble. And about three months later, I got a call back just to say, oh, we have a spare slot, do you want to speak? And I was like, that's mad. And it was because I was in that space, I was in the right space. I was surrounding myself with the right people. And that's so important for you to put yourself in rooms where you're gonna connect with people, whether that's virtually or whether that's in person when we eventually get back to it. And then thirdly, I really wanna encourage you to be courageous because when I went to a networking event, when I first started Foot Being Humble, I had like a hundred followers. I'd posted like three pictures. I stood up at an event when they said that we've got a technical problem. Does anyone want to stand up and share something they're working on? I stood up and gave this horribly bad speech about what I was doing and it was all quite muffled. But I got 100 new speakers in that room. And now at the end of all of my events, I always offer up the mic to other people to kind of share their movements and projects they're working on. And it's so inspiring to see people just get up and get comfortable with talking about themselves, the projects they work on, the businesses they run. So just be, be hungry, be available, and also be courageous. And then thirdly, I just want to say, like, you have to be in it. If you even want to think about winning any awards, any... Uh, nominations, getting recognized for your work publicly or the input that you bring, you have to put yourself in that situation or you have to make yourself 
part of that process. As much as we love to sit around and think that there's somebody who's going to submit us for awards or there's somebody that's going to spot our talent, the reality is it's probably not going to happen and you have to get up and you have to do it yourself. Um, a few points on this. So I first of all, I want you to be visible in the right spaces with the right people. So making sure you have lots of channels to communicate your work. So I was named as the Dots 100 Women Change in the Creative Industry, but that was because I ran events and I was creating content that was making that part of me. Two years ago, before I started Foot Being Humble, I was not nobody. I literally was just an account manager in advertising. Nobody knew who I was. I had no reputation, no book deals. And actually by creating a whole new side project, I was able to build up a new profile for myself and how people perceive me. Second thing is I really want you to be persistent. So this is a picture of me after three months into running Foot Being Humble, I was invited to speak on BBC World News and I was absolutely shitting it. It was so scary. It was such a daunting thing. And I've had some good press and I've had some bad press, but I actually wanted to touch on about quite a big media publication that did bad press on Foot Being Humble. And then a year later, because of all the success and all the great things that have come from it, they interviewed me as an expert in my field. And I think that's just really important to say, like, there are going to be people that maybe don't always agree with what you're doing, or maybe they don't always see how, what you're doing as great. But if you keep working out and you keep showing people what you're capable of, they will come round at the end. And if they don't, then they're not the people you need to worry about. And then thirdly, um, this year I won, I got, uh, made the short list of Forbes 30 under 30 Europe um, for the marketing and advertising category. And that was done through me nominating myself and answering roughly 60 to 70 questions on why I'm worth it. And honestly, it was so daunting, so painful. And at lots of points I told, told myself I wasn't going to do it and I probably wasn't going to get in for it. And actually... It's about knowing your self-worth throughout your entire career and knowing when to say yes to things, knowing when to walk away from opportunities. But actually, when you see you're making an impact or you know you are, make sure that you're putting yourself in the running for it because it's only you that's going to champion yourself. And I think I just want to end that section on this quote that none of us were good at the sex the first time, but it didn't stop us from trying again. And I think this is really important for you to remember it with anything that you're doing where you don't feel like you're comfortable in it or you're unsure is that actually you will always get better if you keep trying you just have to keep trying so for this section what I want you to do is to write down three people or all three brands that you'd like to work for and connect with them online and what I mean by connecting online I just mean going on to LinkedIn and just adding them or following them on Twitter or following them on Instagram so I'm going to give you one minute just to write down three people that you can connect with that you might be able to work for or that you just like to stay connected with for your career to see how you might be able to work with them in the future. I'm just reading the comments and I saw that somebody said I was told not to be a jack of all trades. And I think we get told that a lot. And actually I would say I'm living proof that a jack of all trades is not a bad thing. I also wanna say when it comes to networking, uh, I'm from the North of England and I didn't have a single contact in the creative industry when I moved to London. And I worked really hard to network and put myself in the right rooms. And I ended up building up my own contact list, building up a great black book of contacts, working with really big brands, all because I put myself out there and did it. So please, please treat networking with the skills and like with the passion that it deserves because it's not optional. It's something that you need to do. Um, so that's your minute up. Um, and the key learning really is, and this, this goes for everything at all points in your career, is just do not let self-doubt stop you from doing it. Um, there's a really great book called uh, The Confidence Kit by Caroline Forhun, and she talks about the fact that very often we're only com confident in something when we're competent in it, when we're an expert in it. But actually, if we have more self-confidence, that's more like just having confidence and the belief you can do it, even if you're not qualified in it. And that's what everyone needs to have is a good amount of self-confidence and don't let like imposter syndrome or anybody that's ever made you feel like you can't do things, don't let those voices 
take over the fact all the opportunities that could put you on the map and help you build your career like that's their problem it's not yours and then the fourth thing I want to talk to you about is, is 2020 as a whole. Um, and I know it might seem a bit strange saying this, and I don't want anybody to take offense because I know how difficult this year has been for everyone. But actually, we still have six months left to go. And I feel like there are things that could, you could benefit from. And I think actually, if you take what's been quite a shit year and turn it into something that is... It, that ends up being either a project or an inspiration or a way that you carve out your own reputation, then that would be so much more fulfilling than looking back on 2020 and being like, oh, I just had to write it off. And this is a piece of art by Jasmine Sira, who I'd recommend checking out as an artist. But I think it's really interesting this It Begins at Home because I do think it does. I think there are so many great ideas that can start from home. Now, I know a lot of people probably feel like this. I'll t take some yes or no's on this as, as we talked about at the beginning, probably feeling like that 2020 has been managed by the Fire, Fire Festival uh, organizers. And also this has pretty much been me most days on the left-hand image. So I do get that and I totally empathize with it. But I wanna tell you that Airbnb and Uber were born out of a recession. And this is something that I heard on a webinar recently um, ran by Shani Mears, who's another great female that you should check out in the industry. And these are two of the world's biggest companies that were born out of a financial crisis. And that is proof to show that ideas can actually come at times of like desperation and drama and when you feel like the world's just a bit shit. Um, and there's a really great, does anybody know Cindy Gallup? If you don't know her, check her out. She's really great, great inspiration. Um, she said on a webinar recently, think of a way for companies to make money right now and you will be invaluable. And I think not only can you obviously like create ways and opportunities to stand out for yourself, but sometimes if you really want to work for a company, it's about thinking about how can you help them make more money? Because fundamentally, that's what businesses care about. And if you came up with an idea or a proposal that did that, then actually imagine how much more compelling your application or how you might stand out would be. And a few other people that I wanted to just call out and a really amazing movements that have started. So Askra is a female um, Muslim running club, which was set up basically because Muslim women wanted a space where they could feel comfortable and feel like that they could exercise uh, amongst their community and actually just feel like they didn't have to conform to, you know, other types of, um running clubs that have already been set up and it's doing brilliantly well and lots of brands are collaborating with it and that was just born out the insight that some people maybe don't want to go to the different types of running clubs that are out there and actually you could just start a small one as, as small as it is that's now grown into being a really interesting platform and then on the right hand we've got um akil who is one of the directors at mnc sarchi school and he also does tons of amazing things and when everything was, you know, all the news started going, you know, really sad towards the black community and all the things that have been happening, which has been super distressing. One of the ways that he immediately started acting on that was by creating crowdfunding page and where he raised, I think it was £10,000 overnight to help mentor 100 black businesses. I put myself as one of the mentors forward for this program. And I know tons of other people that have. And that again was born out of an insight of, of what a really difficult time and issues that people are going through. But two very interesting ideas on how both of those kind of um, concepts are like show an element of your personality, show what you can bring and show how you are looking at the world and looking at ways to make it better. And then also I want you to think about what do you want to be remembered for? So this is something I ask a lot of people like, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to talk about you and say? Um, and I actually went to DNAD New Blood two years ago uh, and I exhibited, I made my own stand there. And there were these two guys that walked around the festival with signs saying they were too old for new blood because they weren't actually in the age bracket and they dressed up as old men and everybody was photographing them and everybody was, you know, and, and some might argue that that wasn't their, their space to do that, but actually it did really catch people's eyes. So it's kind of thinking about where could you push the boundaries in spaces that people don't expect you to, or where could you show up that maybe your voice isn't currently being communicated that, that might help you cut through. And then also it's like thinking about little ideas. So I saw this styling um, picture recently when I was on Pinterest and, you know, this is a, an art director that's styling from home uh, people to look like fruit and objects. So again, it's like, it's this whole like creating something that could just catch people's eyes. And that's, you know, we're all in lockdown right now. It doesn't, that doesn't have to cost you a lot, but it's about thinking about how your ideas can be communicated in a way to stand out. 
And then I think if you think about platforms like Boiler Room, they basically found a boiler room, they stuck a webcam to the wall and they just had like three, like it started with like five or 10 mates just filming the DJ. And then it's grown and grown and grown into this huge platform where again, it's like, that was just one idea of a small room of DJing and filming it and then turning into this global community that people, you know, try and get tickets for and they never get tickets for. So again, just thinking about what are the ideas that could start in spaces that you are not limited to right now. And rather than looking at the constraints that you've had put on you, thinking about how can I use these to put myself forward in different ways. Um, and also just think, look at headlines that people are written about. So this is something that I talk about in one of my other sessions, but you know, if somebody was going to write a headline about you in it's nice that or campaign or DNA D or whatever it would be, what is, what is the title? So, you know, I saw recently the Beyonce quoting activist who's changing the pol political commentary or how writer activist Susan Sontag inspired next year's Met Gala. Like, what is it that you want somebody to write about you and say, and almost work backwards from there and you can think about, okay, well, if that's what I want the industry to know me for, I need to start doing stuff in this direction or I need to start pushing myself in another way. So now the next thing I want you to do, and this might, you know, take you a little bit longer. So um, maybe just make notes of the questions, but I want you to think about the following things like, what problems do you think need solving in your industry? What problems do you think need solving in the world? What pisses you off on a daily basis? And what or who do you feel inspired by? And make this long list because actually it will be really useful for you to go, you know, I've got my style of work and I've got what I'm capable of in my current portfolio. But as someone who really, you know, I, when I hire people, I want to know that they're engaged in the world and everything about them and all the different things that, that they should care about. And I want to be presented things that maybe I'm not thinking about. So what is it that you might be able to look at that either motivates you or pisses you off or that you think, actually, why has this never been changed? So I'll give you one minute to think about that. Okay, you've got about 10 seconds left and um, feel free to grab a photo of this quickly on your phones or take a screenshot on your laptop if that will help you. Um, but yeah, just try and think about, you know, as you grow your career and, and keep coming back to these questions because you'll definitely feel different things throughout your career and you'll learn different things. And, you know, there'll be different things that drive you and motivate you. You know, I've got tons of projects and ideas that I want to do that are based on different parts of the world that I just think should be tackling issues that are being overlooked. And actually, we're all capable of doing something, whether you're a designer or a writer or a video creator, whatever it may be, the commentary that you create, it kind of builds on your personal profile and that's how you can build your reputation. So I just, I want the key learning from that section is like, rather than everybody saying, this was meant to be my year, why don't you just make 2020 your year and actually just not let the shit things that have happened be the reason that you don't get opportunities? Why don't you just take it in your stride and be like, no, I'm going to own this and I'm going to look back on this year as something that actually was the definition of my career. And then finally, I want to encourage you, this is the final section now, is to be your own best hype man, woman, or however you identify yourself. Um, and just, you know, just care less and share more. Like I really, you know, Lil Kim from the VMAs is the 90s reference, so apologies if this isn't, you know, young enough, but I like need you to like let go of any of the drama of like fearing of what people are going to say and how you're going to be perceived. And actually, you know, it's about that idea of don't just tell me you can do it, show me you can do it. Um, so in this section, I've just included a few tactical ways to use different channels that could help you get noticed in, you know, the industry or the field that you want to be known for. So first of all, um, on the left hand side, we've got my LinkedIn profile. So a few things. There's the banner image at the top where I use to promote my book, but could also be a space for any of you to promote your work or what you want to be known for. So. Prior to my book, I used to include a picture of myself public speaking because, again, even if it's just subliminally, I'd like people to land on my page and see that they uh, that, that I am a public speaker and I'm available for that. 
And then um, my bio, I've obviously got that I'm the founder and author of But Being Humble and the Forbes 30 Under 30 and also the Dots uh, 100 Women Changing the Creative Industry. So these are just things that I want people to immediately identify me as. So when you're thinking about updating your bios, and I know it may be tricky for some of you who don't feel intimidated that you don't necessarily have these achievements yet, because I have no doubt that you will, but actually put what you want to be known as. So try not to have like graduate or student, I would put in there um, that you are a writer or you know, you're a content creator. Just say what you want to be known for and strip out language like aspiring to be. So just, just put yourself in that world. And then on the right hand side, you'll see that, um, again, I'm obviously promoting my book a lot as that's my big achievement right now. And I've just pinned that tweet to the top of my Twitter profile. So uh, apologies if this seems obvious, but it doesn't for everyone. So maybe think about the things that you could pin at the start of your profile. And that's the same for you know, Instagram highlights and all the different channels have usually something that you could drive people towards. Um, and then this is a really nice series that um, Dan Woodger does. He's an illustrator and he does stuff I did this week. And he t does the name, he does the date with it. He does a song with it and he'll show, you know, I created an illustration. I've made a little promo for my trip to New York and I went to an event. And actually, I think this is a really nice way of showing um, your self-promotion so that people kind of know what to expect and they don't feel like you're constantly drowning them with it or whatever, but it's kind of like a constant pattern. And then what's really nice is he keeps them as highlights on his profile where it's like April, May, June, uh, you know, and so onwards. So just a good way for people to think about, like show your story and what you're up to. Um, I saw a brilliant website uh, recently uh, by Charlotte Bernard. Um, I think I said that right. Sorry if I haven't. And she has not only does her work look great, but at the top of each of the different projects, she's kind of just put these little symbols saying featured or awarded um, or published. And actually, that's really nice signifiers for someone who's just landing on the website to see maybe some of the work and how it's been celebrated. So maybe think about as well, when you're showing your work on channels, as well as explaining it, how might you might be able to make it really easy for people to see, actually, this isn't just a project, this has been awarded as well. And then, I, you know, I've been saying this to a lot of people is that like, I think we get a bit complacent with the digital world and thinking that that's the only solution. But I actually have a friend who printed um his portfolio and handle it and it was beautifully done and he hand delivered them and he actually got seven interviews in one month um because he sent in something physical and there's no doubt it was because his work was brilliant as well but i do think there's something about can you send something or can you cut through in a different format or a different approach that would get my attention because so often it is just PDF and CV. And I'm not saying you have to go out and spend loads of money. I think there are different ways that you can come up with ideas that if you really want it to work for a company or a person, how might you get their attention? Um, and there's a couple of other examples. On the left is some photography that a friend of mine did. She's not a photographer, but at the start of lockdown, she really wanted to reposition herself as a photographer. So she said that she was offering, you know, day rate of 100 quid, I think. And she got like three pieces of business from just people that were following her on her Instagram account. So if there is something that you've always wanted to do, but you've not done it yet, don't be afraid to start doing it because she didn't have any expertise. She takes nice photos on her Instagram, but she's never actually shot clients or anything like that. And then I think the reference on the right as well is a really nice example where Greg James reshared someone's mix um, where they'd uh, done, I finally finished mixing Dua Lipa with um, a certified bot that is the BBC News theme and Greg James reshared it. So again, that's a really good example that even in COVID, um, which was, this was done in like about a month ago, people are still self-promoting and actually getting themselves noticed, noticed remotely. And then also another account for you to check out. This is a platform I started with my friends called the Hard to Forget Collective. And this is um, a, a platform that basically celebrates stories about love, sex and everything in between. And the reason we set it up is because we wanted to demystify some of the stuff that goes on and not make people feel awkward basically and, and almost rid any shame or guilt that you've been made to feel around love and sex and one night stands and all those things. So. The, but part of that wasn't just, that wasn't about self-promoting. It was about our values of wanting to create a community and support a community of around a topic of love and something that we're interested in. So sometimes it doesn't even have to be life-changingly different, but it's something that you're tapping into an insight that maybe people aren't being served up currently. 
Um, and then finally, I just want to say own it and just don't be embarrassed about owning it. I think, you know, if you don't feel comfortable putting stuff on your personal channels, make separate accounts so that, you know, you're just pushing out your own work or find a new group if people aren't making you feel comfortable for the work that you're sharing, because it's, it's going to be so important for you to focus on self-promotion if you do want to stand out. Um, so in summary, my points are uh, don't hide who you are. Make sure that you get across your personality. Um, show your values by really communicating the story and the process behind your work. Say yes to a lot. And I don't mean burnout. I mean, say yes and being open minded so you don't get pigeonholed too early on in your career. Try and make 2020 your year rather than one that you want to forget and then care less and share more. Um, I end all of my presentations on that self-promotion shouldn't be a dirty word, so don't let anybody ever tell you it. Um, this is usually where, I'd, where everybody would clap, but obviously it's digital, so it's tricky. Um, but before we move on to the Q&A, um, I have also shared a few books and uh, Instagram accounts that I think you should check out. So Simon Sinek Start With Why is a really good advertising book or just book about finding purpose, whether that's for a brand or a business or just yourself. One Plus One Equals Three is one of my favorite books by Dave Trott, who's an ad man legend. Um, he talks about lots of cool different stories that are inspirational. Creative Confidence is a brilliant book from um, the founders of IDEO and they just look at different ways that you could tackle briefs and projects uh, in a, just a completely unique way. And I think it's a really inspirational book. The Art of People by Dave Kirpin is a great book on how to build relationships and he got his entire wedding sponsored just by having clever relationships and messaging. And then a few Instagram accounts I thought I'd really encourage you to check out. So Phoebe Park, and that's Park with an E on the end. She is amazing at sharing different tips on social media. She's the Grazia um, social media editor. So she gives loads of advice on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, like captions you should use, hashtags, really useful. I take inspiration from her all the time. Um, Creative Champs is, some of, is a really great platform read by, led by a lady called Kai, and she's sharing things like five free creative resources, how you price your, um, your like, costings if you're doing freelance, how you, how you boost your portfolio. Like she's a really good person to follow, so I'd highly check her out. And then Lecture in Progress. So if any of you read, it's nice that um, that Lecture in Progress is the spin-off brand that supports, mainly supports emerging talent. So I'd highly recommend them to listen to their podcast, to read their blogs, because they're always pushing out great content. And then finally, one last plug, because it wouldn't be um, a presentation of mine without it, but please, please do grab a copy of the book if you found today's sessions useful. Um, it, uh, ordering it, pre-ordering it helps the success of my book. So if you are remotely interested, please do grab it um, and join my newsletter, which you can join via the link on my Instagram or via the Foot Being Humble website, which is footbeinghumble.com, because that's where you'll get information on the book launch and loads of other advice that I give out. And then on the right hand, we've actually got, I just thought I'd include a few references that I've had from people who have attended my other events. So they're 10 pounds a ticket. And I basically do a similar sort of presentation where I cover off how to talk about yourself, your achievements, how to properly network and dig deep and teach you how to reach out to contacts. And then my third talk is um, how you get the money you want and negotiate it. So please, please do attend them if you've enjoyed them and make sure that you're following us at Foot Being Humble, F Being Humble LDN and myself at Stephanie SW for all updates. Um, and that's everything. So thank you all for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session. I'm wondering if we've got, I have just lost my toolbar for some reason. So let me just, oh, maybe that's because I'm not in control of it, but yes. I will pause. I'm not sure. I'm going to take a pause one second. Um, Ah, there we go.
slight technical glitch there not sure what happened um but we are back and i am happy to answer any questions i know we've probably only got about five minutes left um but yes so let's take a look at some of the questions that we've got um so what if you don't feel obsessed by the industry that you're working in uh, i love design and i'm pursuing that as my career but it doesn't absorb my life should it i don't think it should absorb your life uh, i think you should absolutely have a life but i do think it's that whole thing about how you can communicate yourself and show that you really love it i think it's really obvious when people have done say a degree that isn't relevant or, or maybe you know um haven't necessarily studied in that space and then they just chose the job because it's kind of cool and like that's just what they do versus the people who are like i've always loved art i've always wanted to be a writer and i think it's fine for you to not have always wanted to do that but it's going to be the reason why i hire you or not is how much do you really care about this because i want people that care about it and they're on it um and then what else have we got uh when you spoke about being okay with doing work before being an expert how honest should you be with a client about your experience your expertise or experience so this is a really great question what i'd say is that actually um i would encourage you to never really like don't lie because you don't want to get yourself in a tricky situation but there's a really good ted talk that i share with people which is um oh, i can't think of the, the name of it but it's basically a pro wrestler guide to confidence and he says that when you walk into a room where, that you need to impress you just need to dial up your confidence that bit more so you don't need to lie but you do need to take like that extra bit of like i've got this and i'm gonna smash this um because that's how you really win people's trust and actually i think it's okay not to be an expert in something but you could be doing things like you know positioning yourself as a thought leader or putting out content that shows that you really care about the industry or that you're someone that really gets the insights on it so just don't don't feel like you need to overcompensate or and, and be open about your experience but don't do it to in a detrimental self-deprecating way which is quite a british thing to do i know um what's your advice for networking during lockdown so as i said i'd recommend coming to my event they're actually all this week so tomorrow night is my networking event and uh on tuesday no wednesday lunchtime i'm doing let me blow your mind which is how you talk about yourself and achievements and then next week is bitch about my money which is how you ask more money so I, I recommend coming to those all of those events but networking during lockdown doesn't have to be any different to how it would be if you we weren't in lockdown other than the fact that you're obviously not seeing them face to face but the digital networking side of things is exactly the same so i would just you know if you've got if you want to speak to cool people you know think about speaking to them as a mentor get in contact with them and be like you know i'm really looking for someone to support me and like find guidance during the this kind of time would love to connect with you or make sure you sign up to really cool platforms that run a good event so dnad it's nice that um at the wing have been doing some cool events like think about the brands that you really like and sign up to all of their newsletters and then also just don't be afraid to add people on linkedin and connect with people you know on instagram or slide into their dms because it's got to start somewhere and actually i think people are quite receptive right now during lockdown um how do you deal with brad press do you address it or ignore it uh, that's a really great question in my instance i did ignore it um because the newspaper that wrote it and the person who wrote it was actually just not someone i valued opinions of and actually i i they weren't my audience so i didn't really care um i think you just work hard on proving that you are what you say you are and not everyone's going to take it the same way but it's up to you to kind of choose what what feedback you're going to listen to and what you're not um but i would you know i'd almost make sure that you're getting a rounded perspective from lots of different people because the reality is people are always going to have conflicting opinions but maybe just listen to the ones that say nice things <laughs> to you um i'm mindful of time that it's 12 28 and there's 41 questions um so i'll just try and sift through some of the ones that maybe a lot of you are thinking about at the moment um how do you separate your work from your uh, learning hours and give a realistic time, um, time frame and budget? So I think with stuff like that, it's really important that you um, potentially speak to people who may have been project managers or that you uh, have other freelancers who are doing work in a similar space and just ask other people for their advice on time frames and budgets. 
um, and sort of, you know, really try and break down whether you think the deliverables you're being asked for, it feels appropriate. Make sure that you always get some sort of a contract or a quote that is a covers of what's included and what's not included, because that can be very easily quite dangerous and can turn into a bit of a dramatic relationship if you don't have that in place. Um, how do you negotiate a good starting salary? I hate talking about money and unsure of my worth. So please do attend my Bitch About My Money event next week. But I would say um, there's LinkedIn has a really good sales, uh, has a really good salary tracker tool where you can check for your level, your location and the type of company, how much money you think you should have. I do think because of COVID, it is going to be tricky and salaries may not be as high. So I think the reality is you have to take a salary that you can afford to live on. And particularly if you're in London or in cities that may be higher, kind of more expensive, you need to have the, the bare minimum just to make sure that you can live. Don't ever take something that you can't. Um, and I know it's tricky right now um, from a financial perspective, but at the risk of like encouraging you to do too much, there are always ways that you could take on a role and then potentially earn money on the side doing side hustles or other projects. So, you know, running webinars or training or whatever it may be, you know, there are some digital and um, online stuff that you could be making additional money on top. So um, when I started running Foot Being Humble, it was a side project and it was a side project that I wanted to do as a passion project, but it ended up being a second stream of income for me, which actually I didn't think I was going to get in my role at the time. So it is worth thinking about how could you use your skills in different ways and potentially at different times to try and grow salary and kind of get you through this time but i know it is tricky so i think it is just about building confidence and getting confident as you as you go along um i'm mindful it's 12 30 i'm happy to answer some more questions but i'm also mindful that there may be other sessions and we might have to go um let's see what's the plan um what is the best thing to do um we can give you five more minutes, Steph. Five more minutes. Okay, great. What's, what advice do you give people for feeling stagnant with their ideas in their head and who struggle to see the steps of overwhelmingness at the end of the end of the goal? Oh God, I've got so many tips on that. I think a few things that I do is um, I call people and talk them through my ideas. They might find it a bit annoying and I am someone that likes to talk about ideas a lot, but a lot of the time we get stuck in our heads and we can't communicate ideas because actually we are um we've just we've just hit that wall so sometimes you know whether i'm writing a presentation or i'm trying to write a proposal it helps me just to talk it through to someone and that might be a friend or someone that actually has no idea so i have to really explain it simply so that people get it um, and then I think as well, it's just about making sure you're absorbing inspiration and information from different ways. So if you're getting a bit fed up with the digital world right now, order some magazine subscriptions, you know, things are starting to reopen. What, what exhibitions could you go to or what things that you might be, you be able to experience, like literally just like looking around and seeing how different stores are changing their setups for COVID or, you know, like popping into shops right now, just like, try not to become a prisoner of like behind your laptop and behind your desk. Um, mm, mm, mm. What would you say is a fine line between self-promotion and showing off? So I think this is a really good question. I actually did a post on my Instagram account on how to self-promote without sounding arrogant. Um, I'll push it back out on my Instagram story today so you can check it out. Uh, but I actually think it's about thinking about how you communicate the story. So. In that post, I talked about the fact that you might share your work by celebrating the people that were involved in it. So being a cheerleader of other people and saying, you know, if it wasn't for these people that featured in my film, I could never have done this. So thank you so much. You've been part of this conversation. Or it might be that you're an educator and you're wanting to show people the different things that you've learned and why that was really helpful and, um, you know, what they should learn from it. You might be like the underdog where you like, I never thought this could happen to me, but it has. And I just wanted to share it as, you know, guidance. And I think I am in, in a way in that sort of thing of that, what I mentioned earlier about not necessarily having the contacts when I walked into the industry and completely transforming my life and my career by starting a side project is that actually, you know, anyone can do it. You know, I didn't get funding when I started Foot Being Humble. This was just a self-initiated project. All the ticket sales that I, I got for my first event covered the overheads for everything I was move, doing moving forward like it has massively been a grassroots thing so I do think 
telling stories about how you do things is is often a good way to talk about something without everybody going like oh don't you love yourself um best be a piece of advice about applying for jobs uh when you've got little experience so a couple of things on that try not to go on about being a graduate um i run a free cv writing workshop which i have not yet decided the next day but potentially next week or the week after i'll be running it uh, and one of the things I say is like, if you're a graduate, it's fine to like call it out and say, I'm a graduate um, from this degree or this university, but then just leave it and actually just start talking about your experience. Uh, my experience spans across this, or as you'll see from my work, I do this, but don't tell me that you've got no experience and don't dwell on that. In fact, just hype up the experience from your university projects or your college projects or whatever they may be. And, communicate them in a way that would kind of impress me basically and just don't emphasize the fact that you are fresh out and stuff you just I think we dwell on that and we we that ends up being a bigger problem than it needs to be um and also just making sure that when you read it back it feels like you I, I said to a lot of people recently when you read your opening bio or the rest of your cv or your opening bio in particular do you feel comfortable reading it out or do you feel like a robot because you've regurgitated the things back from their cover note or their, you know, their job spec of what they said they want? And if you don't feel comfortable verbalizing it, then you probably shouldn't be applying with it because it's not going to represent your voice properly. Um, what drives me, uh, what motivates me, uh, lots of different things. Um, I think I realized that when I was at university, I started writing a blog. It was awful, really bad. But I realized that I wanted to work in communications to change the world for the better. Um, although I love brands like Nike and Adidas and, you know, all of those things. To me, just selling products wasn't the thing that stimulated me. I was always really emotionally connected to work that was going to have a deeper impact or a deeper purpose. Um, so I think whenever, particularly now I've gone freelance and self-employed, which I actually did at the start of lockdown, for anybody that is thinking about um, doing it, it's it's scary, but it's manageable. Um, that actually everything I work on now moving forward will have a purpose on it. And I wanna be able to say, I'm really proud of that. I think it's worth saying, it's totally fine if you don't wanna do that and you just wanna make cool shit, that's completely fine. Everybody is driven by different things. There may be brands you've wanted to work for your entire life, or there may be things like creating a TV ad you've always wanted to do. And that's totally fine. Like as you get older, as you have different life experiences, you'll find different things motivate you. And that's totally the, the way to, you know, you know, adapt as you go along. I think if you, I'm one of the people, I'm someone that's changed jobs very regularly. So I've had like six jobs in like seven and a half years. And I don't look at that as a negative. I've always said that I've upskilled each time. And what I want to do is, um, you know, learn and be in an environment that I feel like I'm being tested and pushed. Um, so I would say like, and, and someone once said to me, you need to feel like the shittest person in the room, otherwise you're not in the right room. And what they meant by that was you need to be feeling challenged, otherwise you get complacent and then you're not making your best stuff. So that's something that I've always felt when I feel like I was needed to move on or adapt or, you know, push myself further. It was like, right, I need to move on and do something new. Um, swearing in CVs I'd avoid just because it's not ideal um, obviously I have to because I'm the founder of Foot Being Humble but I'd probably avoid that um, da -da -da -da. so what would be a good example of open-ended questions in networking please come to my event and I will tell you more of those um, as a particular as a political designer activist is it negative to describe yourself as angry I would think about what your anger is driven by so actually um i think you know it's where you think why are you angry and what are the things that you're angry about and it may be better to um describe that as opposed to saying you're angry i think you could say that you are driven by the injustices in the world or whatever that may be but maybe avoid saying that you're just solely angry or think about how you might be able to communicate that in a quite a disruptive way um Da, da, da. any advice on making a name for yourself as a creative up north so i would love to go down to london but need to become more financially stable so i actually started my career 
in um oh someone's just written at the bottom you're not angry you're powerful and i think that's a really good response to that thank you rosie um i actually started my career in the north so i went to university in nottingham uh, i got a job in nottingham for the first year it was awful i cried every week for 11 months and then quit and then got a new job in manchester and i grew my career in the north um working at two different agencies um and that was so integral for me to be able to come down to london because i don't think i would have been able to do that either and you learn a lot and there's still some great you know agencies up there and stuff so i actually think in the north there's less competition for you to be able to stand out um so i would say i would potentially use the benefit of the you know when i was living there i know it's changed quite a little bit but i found it frustrating that there weren't many events or there weren't many collectives or things that were happening um, so actually like how could you use maybe the fact that it's a bit more chilled and there's less competition as your benefit um, I'm mindful of time it's 12 39 Marie um, I don't know how much more time we want to do on uh, you can do one more question I think okay one more question there's been a few floating up um, mm -mm. Da -da -da. Oh gosh, there's so many. Uh, how can I be? Uh, how can I be more confident? And uh, when I'm talking about myself and things that I do, um, I think one of the things that I would suggest in that is basically, first of all, a lot of what we've done in today's session, which is reflecting on the things you've worked on, so that you know the value that you've brought on that project, or you know the value that you've brought just in general. Um, because the sooner you get more comfortable with the fact that you are good at what you do and what you did was really impressive or what you achieved was really important, um, the easier it becomes talking to different people. And actually, I think one of the things that I encourage people to do is to practice your the way that you talk about projects. So it may be, you know, when I go into some rooms and I tell people that I run a business called Foot Being Humble, I immediately get people going like, oh, not for me, before they've even heard about the proposition or what it may be about. So I have to think about how can I pitch what I do in a different way. So sometimes I'll say, oh, I actually help people overcome imposter syndrome and encourage them with confidence. And then all of a sudden it's a different type of conversation. So I do think when you're um, wanting to get more confident with talking about your projects and the things that you've achieved, it is about how can I talk about it in different ways? How can I appeal to different people? Uh, and just really get, um, really get that, that stuff kind of locked down so that you, whether it's an application that you're applying for, whether you're in an interview, whether you're just in the pub with your mates, you're able to just immediately say, this is what I was really proud of, or this is where I think my strengths are. I think very often we focus on what we don't have versus what we do have. Um, that was my last question, I think. Yes, someone's just said they've just ordered a copy of the book. Please do go. It's available on Amazon and Waterstone, but try and grab it on Amazon if that's okay. Um, yeah, thank you all for listening. It's been great and so many great questions. So please do uh, follow us at F being, F being Humble LDN. And um, I know there's a lot of people asking about reviewing CVs or mentoring. I am a one woman show. So everything you see from my books to my events, it's just me. So I would love to be able to help everyone, but I can't always. So um, I am trying to think about ways to grow the support network. So please do kind of stay in touch. And um, I look forward to kind of connecting with you. All.